Love, a sparkling diamond. Well, I was very much influenced by this book by theologian Thomas J. Ord, Pluriform Love. And as he put it, our understanding of love is uniform, but expressions are pluriform. That's where the, I, I, I got the idea of like sparkling diamonds. And in my talk, I will tell how I was influenced by theologian Paul Tillich and Alfred North Whitehead, a uh, mathematician and founder of process theology. And by the way, uh, Thomas J. Ord is also regards himself as a process theologian. Uh, and then contemporary uh, theologians, Harold Kushner, Rob Bell, and Richard Rohr. Next. Well, I chose uh, this title from my autobiography, inspired by the Pluriform Love book, Loves in My Life, Spirituality, Science, and Family. Love is like a sparkling, multi is like sp multifaceted sparkling diamonds. The three facets of love motivated each stage of my increasing ages. So the three types of love are the eros romantic love with passion for science and religious heritage. And the second type is philia love found with your friends and family. And the third is agape love which is sacrificial or parental love. So Karen, in, in your poem, uh, uh, which kind of love would you think uh, was illustrated at the end of that poem? Uh, philia? philia love, yes, philia love, friendship love. I, the poem from beginning to end, I found again in the, the, heart, of in the heart of a friend. So this is my first experience of, of philia love. My, my little sister, who was three years younger than I am, uh, next. Uh, here's a photo of us with uh, our, our parents. And uh, this picture reminds me of uh, the time when uh, my sister and I were both given a, a small box of chocolates. And uh, I love those chocolates, and I rationed them out. I was going to ration them out. I was going to have one each day. I ate the first few, and then the next for the next day, and so forth. And this was going fine until I discovered that she had eaten her chocolates a lot faster, and I suddenly discovered that she was stealing my chocolates. <laughs> I was greatly dismayed, and I don't think my parents did very much about it. It's love. Therefore, all things happen for good when love prevails. I believe this is his interpretation of Paul's letter to the Romans 8.28. All things work together for the good for them that love God. Here's a photo of, of my uh, Methodist minister dad and my music teacher mother. <laughs> well, I also remember my mother, a, a dramatic soprano, Sol Sylvia Holzerkar, singing this love soul in my father's worship services. Ah, sweet mystery of life. Mm -hmm. At last I found it was very popular in, in, when I was a child. And I will attempt. Uh, to sing it to you as, as I remember. For tis love, tis love alone the world is seeking. And it's love and love alone that can repay. Tis the answer, tis the answer to all of living. For it is love alone that rules for a. <laughs> <laughs> a, mate, a, a student who majored in, in physics, majoring in physics at uh, MIT, uh, I was required to take a, a course outside my specialty. And uh, I particularly remember uh, Paul Tillich's Theology of Culture course, and I would ride my bicycle up to Harvard and, and listen to him lecture. He had a very thick German accent. Um, he was a chaplain uh, during World War I. And um, this saying, uh, which was part of his, uh, uh, his uh, uh, this is a, a Time Magazine obituary of him, he says, this is Tillich teaching in Chicago. Uh, he, after uh, being a university a professor at Harvard, he went on to the University of Chicago. And, it, and his main saying is, love is stronger than death. And <coughs> as a chaplain in World War uh, I, I'm sure he got to experience uh, many more deaths of his comrades than many of us have in, in, in our lifetime. So this was uh, 
particularly a, a member of life. Of course, uh, it, the, it was the power of the resurrection that overcame the power of Jesus' death. So next. Well, this is my first experience of, uh, of, uh, of, of Eros, the romantic love. But this is uh, Karen's uh, grandmother, uh, Karen Hanson Carr, uh, walking at the mouth of the Ipswich River north of Boston on our first date. Uh, she was born in Berlin, Germany in 1940 and told me as we were having our romantic times on the beach, I would go anywhere in the world with you. And my dad uh, later, uh, later that year married us in the MIT chapel on November 25th, 1960. I'm in my canoe that I, uh, that I built with my grandfather and uh, took, that was how we got down to the mouth of the Ipswich River. And in the, in the, uh, this is me with Karen. Uh, and Karen, you like to point out your mother, uh, your mother, uh, young mother. Right here is my mom, who's here today, and uh, this is their family. Yes, yes. And we were celebrating uh, my mother's uh, birthday. She was born on February 14th, uh, uh, 1906, and we were celebrating together in 1982, a family celebration. You can see our, our growing family, and the next slide shows... Uh, the more grown up, uh, there's Karen in the left with her uh, German uh, uh, native costume. Uh, and uh, there again, uh, Karen, you might like to point out your mother growing up, uh, Emily. Uh, Emily. Uh, and my youngest daughter, uh, Lilo, a, a few years later became uh, the leading lady, leading lady of, of the mother a figure in uh, the, uh, the, her high school play, Fiddler on the Roof. And I learned at that play that uh, that the father also had five daughters in that play. So I had that in common. So uh, the next. Uh... This is a poem that um, uh, was written about my grandpa and my grandmother, Karen, on their 25th wedding anniversary. So 25 years. Karen and Paul have been wed 25 years. Sounds of joy and happiness reach out to our ears. Above the roar of five lovely daughters, the sound clears. Karen's song of, expre of love expressed in harmonious Paul Veers. Paul's love resounding in loud, enthusiastic Karen cheers. So as I was grieving uh, my loss and, and, and the loss of the mother of my five lovely daughters, uh, I found strength in the sermon, Spiritual Presence that Karen and I had heard German theologian Paul Tillich preach at Harvard Memorial, Memorial Church a few months after we, had, uh, we, had, we were married. And Tillich had said in this sermon that uh, came back to me, spiritual presence is the power within it that enables us to reach our truest and greatest potential in spite of our faith. And, and this uh, gave me, me hope. Next. The best hope and consolation in this book by a Rabbi Harold Kushner when bad things happen to good people. It was sort of an upstate date to the, uh, to the uh, book of Job. Um, you know, he, he lost his young son. He had a young son had a very strange disease and uh, his young son aged extremely rapidly and died when his son was a teenager. And um, he shares uh, how people tried to console him. Uh, one of which was, uh, well, God sends, um, sends you uh, uh, tragedies like this to make you a stronger person. And he debunks this along with other <laughs> attempts at consolation. And his conclusion was that God's love to people was expressed in community, the community of love that supported him, him uh, at that time. And it was the same for me. It was uh, my, uh, my uh, mother and, and sister. And I had a cousin in, uh, in, uh, in Switzerland, as a matter of fact, uh, Emily has spent the summer after her mother died uh, visiting our cousin in Switzerland. And, uh, and uh, Lilo and Sylvia, the two younger daughters, uh, spent the summer uh, with uh, my sister who was living in the Seattle, Washington area. My, my biggest problem was that I never was a girl. I never had been a girl. And I, I was very fortunate to have some, have some, have some, have some neighbors, uh, uh, Ralph and, and Nancy Penn, who uh, Basically adopted our, socially adopted our, <laughs> our kids, our young, our young daughters. Next. Well, uh, as, uh, uh, as, as uh, Tom Ward wrote in another book, uh, 
God's true omnipotence is the omnipotence. That's the power of omni is another word for love. We, we get the word amicable and the French word for French is, uh, is ami. So uh, he says that God's true om omnipotence is omnipotence, the power of God's love. And uh, Carol, we'll read another uh, helpful passage from it's in Romans chapter 8, verse 38. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor principalities, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. Adios, may you experience this vast, expansive, indestructible love. And may you know in your bones, and may you know deep in your bones that love wins. So um, here's a final chapter of my life. I, I, I had made my home in Bedford, Massachusetts for 40 years. So why did I move 40 miles north to Bedford, New Hampshire? Yeah. For Ginny. <laughs> Yay, Ginny. <laughs> to marry Ginny. Life, according to Richard Rohr. Um, and God is love, says Re Re Reverend Rob Bell, and love wins. And the final slide. And so, uh, uh, may we all go forth today as we leave uh, as sparkling diamonds. Thank you. <laughs>